there are a few theories in the world of the first Pokemon generation that no one has really sussed out yet. That's why we give you 5 myths about Pokemon that you haven't heard of. Number 5. Ditto is a Mew clone. Rumor has it that many experiments were done in the lab of the Cinnabar Island, with the goal to clone the legendary Pokemon Mew. This supposedly didn't work though, and a Ditto was the waste rubbish. This theory seems a bit far-fetched at first, but if you look at the facts closely, you'll see that a lot speaks for it. They've got similar color and the same weight. Also, the DNA plays a big role. As you probably already know, Mew has the DNA of all Pokemon in it, which allows it to take any form. Ditto, on the other hand, is genetically unstable, so that it does this involuntarily when meeting other Pokemon. The same applies to learning attacks. Ditto's location in the first edition suggests a connection to the lab. And number 4. Pixie's Evil Shadow We've got two interesting facts for you at once. Pixie was supposed to be the Pokemon mascot instead of Pikachu. Unimaginable, because Pikachu is just cute and irreplaceable. This theory is even more interesting. Gengar supposedly is the evil shadow of the moon Pokemon Pixie. It's funny that the name Gengar is a short form of the Japanese word Doppelrungenga, which originates from the German word Doppelgänger. Gengar spikes could be the devilish replacement of Pixie's wings. Also, the two Pokemon have the same body shape as well as the same mouth. If this theory really is true, remains unknown. Let's continue with number 3 and the suicide music. Do you remember the town Lavandia? The theme music of the Western world version apparently is a different one to the Japanese. This allows room for speculation, and a widespread theory is that the original melody drove children to suicide. It had frequencies that only kids could hear and that caused headaches, hallucinations and illnesses. Even though these events were never confirmed, the rumor stays persistent. Nintendo never commented. And number 2. Bill's Garden This is a myth that sadly doesn't ring true. To get a ticket to the MSN, we travel to Bill's house in the course of the game. It's thought that the Pokemaniac owns all Pokemon, even those that aren't listed in the Pokedex. The appearance and name was known of one of them, Pikablu, the blue Pikachu. This turned out to be Meryl when the second generation hit the market. Being able to get into Bill's garden also was a popular rumor. To do this, you'd have to show him his favorite Pokemon Eevee, as well as the three evolutions of Viperion, Jolteon, and Flareon. However, the code never contained a sign of succeeding, and a garden never existed. Sorry. And we've reached today's number one, Sad Farewell. The nameless rival accompanies us through the entire game and challenges us to fights that we must win, of course. One of the fights on the MSN sees us up against against his Raticat, amongst others. In the later course of the game, we meet the rival whilst entering the tower in Lavandia, and he asks us if we know what it's like to have a dead Pokemon. In the following fights, we never get to see his Raticat again, which must mean that we killed it on the MSN. Not exactly kid-friendly. Now you can watch 5 Pokemon ghost stories that really happened. So guys, if you like this video, please give us the thumbs up. Now you should share this video with your friends. To do so, just click here or use the link in the description. That's it for today. See you next time. Bye.